Hi. Alright, so I'm playing Command today, and I was thinking of just doing a series basically where I analyze a piece of military hardware and determine how it stacks up against anything else. And uh, this time around, I think I'm going to do the Russian S400. So as everyone knows, uh, Russia has deployed the S-400 systems to Syria and as a result uh, I think they really could in fact uh, have a major uh, no-fly zone set up as a result of having these systems in place. Uh, so I was just going to do a test to demonstrate. So we're going to make the faction Russia, we're going to put them in Syria, and we're going to have the USA. So we're going to, now we're not going to load anything, we're just going to put a radar site, so an S-400 radar, cheese board, <laughs> and then we're going to put an S-400 battery. I'm going to demonstrate that these are pretty lethal, so I'm going to give it the 12 tells just to show you. And let's put some point defenses around it because you wouldn't have an S400 without some protection here. <laughs> so we're going to put an SA22, I think it is, is the Greyhound. This. Yep, this is what I'm looking for. And we're going to have just a nice little AA bubble around this. So, you've got your short range batteries that should provide point defense, and your long range battery should uh, be able to protect you. And let's move the radar in between this circle here as well. So now remember, if this radar is off, it will not be seen until it is ready to fire. Now, if we look here, we can see the capabilities are pretty substantial. We have this radar, which is the same one. So we can track targets at very long range. And then we have this uh, fire control radar and we have a ton of missiles in our magazine. We've got a ton of launchers with these SA-21 missiles. These are long range. And I believe they are extremely fast. Yes, extremely fast. So these lock on to you. It's not long before impact. And a high probability considering how far away they shoot. I mean, it's a pretty uh, nasty system here. So, let's make the Americans. We'll make them hostile towards each other. So in the event they need to ID aircraft or anything like that, that yeah, that's one thing, but let's, let's just set up a uh, seed patrol or something. So I'll take the uh, take a Nimitz class uh, aircraft carrier. And let's get him back a little bit further from this. Let's 
start at least out of range here. <laughs> And we're going to give this Nimitz class carrier a bunch of Super Hornets. And for the sake of simplicity here, let's make this uh, unlimited magazines and aircraft damage, but. <laughs> So let's factor in that two-thirds of a carrier's air wing are going to be on maintenance at any one point in time. You'd have a squadron dedicated to the air war. So I'm going to take the remainder two squadrons for strikes. And this is probably more than you'd normally see, but hey. We're going to try doing a strike against these. Try just a regular seed campaign against them. So we're going to ready these immediately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess around with this new thing to find a circle, and I'm going to set up a seed patrol to take out. the rough area in which I know their stuff is located. That's still a bug where it just switches back automatically. That I'm not sure why that happens. <laughs> okay, so we're going to try to take out this area. This is assuming that Syria is sleeping. We're just going to use these harm loadouts. It says short range, but 560 nautical miles, it should be plenty. And 300 miles away. So our aircraft should all take off undetected and be able to start searching for and suppressing enemy air defenses. So let's assign them to the seed patrol. And so I'm going to take off the one-third rule. So this is a massive, massive, massive patrol. I don't think that it's normal for 24 aircraft to be scrambled to attack something, but this is uh, <laughs> this is going to be the exception here. Actually. Yeah, so no jam. Oh, let's do this without jammers. So, this scenario assumes that we are not trying to identify anything. We are just trying to shoot down anything that comes into range that is hostile. So we should see aircraft taking off here. These aircraft are armed with harms. I'm getting quite close. All right, so two bogeys coming towards us. Normally, uh, this is not something that would be shot down, but we're enforcing a no-fly zone, so have at it. Get him. And our missile's away. Got more aircraft coming in. Well, we're shooting them down. It's a war zone. Let's just see. Do the Americans even see? Oh, they see what's happening, probably. 
No, they don't. They don't see anything yet. Now, I know they could try flying in low the whole way, but <laughs> they'd never detect anything if they were doing that. They've got to see something's coming in now. Oh yeah, they do. Their only hope would be to dive, and I don't know if they could even do that in time. <laughs> now these missiles are shooting at them very far out, so there's a possibility that not all of these are going to hit. But this just screams, stay away from us, if you know what I mean. It's like, yeah, they, they dove, they managed to get out of the way. I don't think we got any hits there, but that is just, this is just a tough thing to get close to. Although we haven't gotten any hits yet. I would have thought we would have gotten a hit, but no. We have not. Interesting. Has the U.S. seen anything yet? <laughs> now this is not the engagement range that I would choose to use these weapons at. I was just trying to demonstrate that they can force things to stay away. And an S400 battery shooting at you screams, stay away. Speed this up here. Did I get a hit? I did. I got two kills. I've depleted half my missiles so far, but as they start getting closer, I think you'll see far more dangerous uh, missile system.
and by now the Americans must have seen something. They, they uh, at this point, they're they're going to know these are hostile. Now finally missiles are being shot at our SAM, but to this point, nine Super Hornets were lost. But I believe we are now reloading, so this battery is currently out of the fight. Now maybe it's time I turn on additional radars here. Because we know what's coming in. And it's safe to say whatever is left here is going to make short work out of this SA-21 site. Which may not even be able to fire anymore. up and we'll see here that this this battery is effectively dead okay so let's delete everything and start over so analyzing that whole thing we can see that we uh, we fired all of our missiles at a very long range, and we shouldn't have. We should have waited till they got closer. So if we go back to that, and we're going to make that SA-21. Oh, we'll do the 10 tells, or the 12 tells with the 80 missiles. Get that S-400 radar. And then the SA-22s. this main radar let's 
go back to the US who does not know anything is there. And we'll have our carrier. And again, we're going to go in with 24 aircraft. And we're going to go in with two jamming aircraft. But at the same time, we're going to have a smarter SA-21 battery that waits until they actually get close and by close I mean we know that they can only fire about 70 miles out so when they get to about 85 miles I'm gonna start firing on them then we're gonna let them get close so let's put them to the seed patrol mission and we're going to give them harms four harms each and these two guys, we're going to put jammers on them. I'm going to assign them to launch as a. Actually, I'm going to assign them to launch individually. And I'm going to have them just go straight towards this area. And try and. On one thing I want to do here. So we see what we did. Let's clear losses and expenditures. Clean slate, start over. These guys are going to come in and jam. But I want them to go a little bit slower. Because their goal is to jam everything. Their goal is not to uh, be the front, in the front. All right, so let's return back here see if we can execute this better on both sides. So we're already being jammed, but this is a powerful radar, so I think at the ranges we're going to be engaging in, it will not matter and be able to burn through, no problem. Whoa, what's firing that far? Did I? Oh, wow. Now that is a problem. Turn up all these radars now. Now they're all being jammed. Let's see what's seen on the other side. Just going to make it all hostile. They, they, everyone knows everything here is hostile. Holy cow, that was unexpected. <laughs> oh, that was immediately identified.
it's not good. Not sure what they're waiting for though. They should be trying to engage the Super Hornet. allocated and fired already. I don't think these guys can escape. Oh, my mistake. Those were not the jamming aircraft. The jamming aircraft are probably somewhere here in the back. There they are. go back to this view we can see jamming is allowing uh, super hornets to fire their missiles at max range they only lost one super hornet and I believe we're about to run out of s 400s if we didn't already And once we do, we're stuck reloading, and I believe everything will be finished off from there, just like last time.
it looks like the next target is going to be the SA-21 that is currently reloading. <clears throat> However, it would seem now that this uh, this battery is completely taken out, and if need me. Uh, tomahawks or anything else could be fired and be virtually guaranteed to hit unless something else is out there to take the stuff out but these harms are going to be lost now there there's no radar for them to lock onto so I would say that this was a much more successful mission three uh, super hornets were taken out However, this scenario, of course, does assume that you know where the S-400 battery is. And that you had jammers. So, what I'm going to do instead is delete all this. And once again, reset. So firing a ton of harms, only losing three aircraft. Let's make a more realistic scenario here. So we're going to make a Russian facility. And we're going to just, uh, or okay, so just a command bunker, we could comm center. So Somebody's goal is to attack this comm center, and I'm going to give them the whole carrier air wing to do it. What they're not going to know is that S-400 battery will be here. Turn on the relief layer and put a radar on the high ground. Let's get these over to someplace flat. This could also be put somewhere flat. Here, we'll make it, now uh, we'll leave it there. <coughs> and 
we are going to put an S400 radar here. So now, going to sign another strike around taking this out. And I believe this will show the S400 to be much more dangerous. So we are going to make a strike of 36 or sorry we're going to take 48 F-18s we're going to also assume that 12 of them are down for maintenance we're also going to put E-18 growlers and we are taking the most advanced one, so jammers we are not currently using. and arm them with AMRAMs to escort a bunch of aircraft armed with harms. Let's do even more with harms. to strike aircraft thinking that they're going to strike from a distance with JSAO. So we'll make a mission, a land strike mission, and call it land strike. So these are going to be land strike escorts. Oh, oops, I selected ARGM. That's fine. We can definitely do ARGMs. We're going to do four of them per aircraft. Land strike. Oops, these should be land strike escorts. And last but not least, land strike escorts. <clears throat> Oops. So, add a target here. So that's their goal to get to that. to do single aircraft uh, I'm just going to do single aircraft that way the jammers go off and do their own thing. So 
to go back to the Russian side and wait for this attack to come in. Now this is an insanely large attack. And uh, I think that a carrier's air wing is more powerful than a lot of countries' air forces are. So that looks like it's everything. Got a ton of aircraft armed with JSAs. Got a ton of aircraft that are escorting them in. They should now be in radar range. So, oh, one thing I did forget to do, better do it. Oh, we're not gonna, actually, yeah, we are. Oops, escort doctrine. They're going to use their OECM. So they're going to start jamming. We lose sight of them immediately. What do they see on the American side? A radar and a bunker. So it's very likely that we'll start seeing We're not actually seeing all aircraft, only a few. Is that the jamming aircraft they're seeing? No. Huh. There's closer stuff and they don't see it, which I find interesting. But I think it's time we turn on our radars and start engaging.
fact, I suspect that we've fired a good amount of the missiles we have loaded. And our SA-21 battery is now going to be thoroughly disrupted. I don't think it's going to ever get a shot off again. <laughs> so if we look here, their radar is destroyed. So whatever damage they did, they did, but this strike is still happening. They managed to shoot down seven hornets. However, I think that, as you can see, uh, while they are capable of inflicting casualties, there's just no way that a S-400 battalion is going to stop an entire carrier strike group. It will, however, maul it. Let's be clear about that. It can. Uh, I don't know why they're still shooting, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Did it fire something? Probably the SA-16s. Yeah, I believe these are man pads. So if it fired one of those at a missile, good luck. So now at this point I have every reason to believe that the rest of the strike will be carried out. And it has been. So, 
Did it bloody the American's nose? Yes. Did it stop the strike? No. <clears throat> uh, and just to note, this was flying high. Uh, next episode, I'm going to try uh, the same thing with flying low because I think that uh, the human controlling the aircraft can give a lot more options than we're seeing here instead of controlling the S400 battery. So uh, next time will be number two in the series where we look at the effectiveness of the S400. Thank you for watching. If you like this, like, comment, subscribe. Dislike if you don't, share, go ahead. <laughs> and I'll see you next time.